Now let's look at a velocity problem. Find the average velocity in meters per second of a bicycler who starts 150 meters north of town and is 1,200 meters north of town after 30 minutes. I find it easiest to write out all of our information first. If you get in the habit of writing all the information in the problem first, I think you'll find that you'll be much better off at solving these problems. So we know our initial position is 150 meters north. Our final position is 1,200 meters north. Our time is 30 minutes, and we're trying to solve for our velocity, our average velocity. Now, next I'm going to write out the equation. Average velocity equals delta x over t. I want this in meters per second, so the first thing I need to do is convert 30 minutes into seconds. So 30 times 60 gives me 1800 seconds. So my average velocity is going to be my final position minus my initial position divided by 1800. So 1200 minus 150, my average velocity is therefore 1050 meters or 1050 meters over 1800 seconds which comes out to an average velocity 0.58 meters per second. So if you'll get in the habit writing out all your variables, writing out the equation you're using, and then solve, showing all your work to solve the equation, I think you'll be much better off at solving problems, and I have a much better ability to give you credit for all the things that you do correctly. Okay, let's look at this next problem. School bus takes 0.53 hours to reach the school from your house. If the average speed of the bus is 19 kilometers per hour, what is the displacement during the trip? Take a moment, press pause here in the video, and try to solve this yourself. Then press play again and see the way I answer it. So I'm going to start by writing out my variables. Time, 0.53 hours. This is where knowing the units that go along with every variable is so useful. If you know that hours is a time, we know that's a time variable. Speed or velocity, average velocity, it doesn't have a direction, that's why it's referred to as speed, but it fits in the equation the same way. We're looking for displacement. So average velocity equals displacement over time. We take the equation, velocity equals displacement over time, plug in our variables, 19 equals delta x over 0.53. Multiply both sides by 0.53, we get a displacement, in this case of kilometers, 10.07 kilometers. Okay, let's look at another problem. Hiker is at the bottom of a canyon facing a canyon wall closest to her. She is 280.5 meters from the wall, and the sound of her voice travels at 340 meters per second at that location. How long after she shouts will she hear the echo? Be careful to consider why echoes happen. So take a moment, pause the video, solve this problem on your own, and then let's pick back up. Okay, let's write out what we know. We know in this case that she is... 280.5 meters to the wall. We know that the average velocity of the sound, 340 meters per second, and we're looking for a time. Key thing to remember though is this, be careful why can echoes happen. Think about the echo. We need to think in this problem about why an echo happens. So we have a person, there's 200 80.5 meters away from the wall. When an echo happens, the sound doesn't just travel to the wall. It bounces off the wall and comes back. So in actuality, the displacement that we're going to talk about, total displacement that's distance that's traveled for the sound, 280.5 meters, and then it's going to come back 280.5 meters, so our total 
distance that this is going to travel is 561 meters. Velocity equals displacement over time. 340 meters per second equals 561 meters over t. We need to cross multiply. 340t equals 561. We get a time of 1.65 seconds.